This, this thing on prayer and prevailing in prayer, um, it is something that we really need to work on. And each one of us must just be completely, completely sunken into the ministry of prayer. And we just make sure that things are happening because we are praying and we are seeking after the face of the Lord. And we are saying, God, let us experience the greatness of thy power and of thy strength. Let the burden be on our hearts, Lord. Don't let us in any way wander from the burden for prayer. Now, I just want us to look at Isaiah 21, verse 11 and 12. You know, we must be a burdened watchman. We must be so burdened that we do not, that there is no running away from this reality. The burden for prayer is so real in our lives. Now, this is what Isaiah 21, 11 and 12 says. The burden of Duma, he calleth to me out of, of seer, watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman say, the morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will in inquire, inquire ye, return, come. The section in which this context is found treats, treats of other nations in their respective relationships to God's ancient people. The first 12 chapters of Isaiah's prophecy contain prophetic messages and, uh, concerning Judah and Jerusalem, while chapters 13 to 23 have to do with surrounding peoples concerning each of whom. And there are 10 in all. The prophet proclaims that what he calls a burden. The seventh burden is the burden of Duma, which is Edom, the old hereditary enemy of Israel. Isaiah has three distinct oracles concerning Edom. So, you know, the, you know, Isaiah had a burden, a burden to pray for the nation of Israel in regard to the enmity that is there with nations that are surrounding her. He spends time, he has the burden on his heart. And I just want to encourage you to read that book once again. And you will realize that the burden that this guy is having is so real. Praying for the nation of Israel and also praying judgment over the nations that are arch enemies of Israel. This is something that we need to look into and, concern and, and put our faith in and really travail in prayer for the nation and for our people. We are supposed to pray. There is something very modern about our about all this. Edom is still turning to Israel in her hour of need. We are living in a period of sore perplexity, and we are watching a bewildered world face problems which is which it is powerless to solve. It is asking for light, but what can we say? To interpret the events around us as we know the truth is to declare the, the doom of the civilization in which we live. The handwriting is on the wall. We have a duty to pray and pray that God will, will, will have mercy and compassion over his nation and that he will bring his power and show his majesty to the, to the redeemed of God. That the church of Jesus Christ is going to move on and the enemies of the church of God will come to bow at the feet of the church because the kingdom of God will definitely rule over the nations of the world. But we and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And that can only be done if you and I arise and pray 
and seek after the face of the Lord and call on the Lord and abide in the presence of the Almighty God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. We just pray that, God, you continue laying a burden on the hearts of men and women, the watchmen that you have called to intercede and pray and watch and wait until righteousness flows like a mighty river and salvation sweeps over the nations of the world. God, we just pray that even those nations that hated you, hated the work of God and hated the, the people of God, will be enlightened to come to the knowledge of God and just come and bow and fall at the foot of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and glory because you've heard our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Spiritual nourishment, click on subscribe button below. Click on the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another video.